Attorney General Jeff Landry, who joins us on the phone now. Good morning, Jeff. How are you? Good morning. So you've uh, you have a lot going on. Obviously, yeah. we initially when we when we booked the interview, I wanted to talk about the kind of stalled budget and the back and forth uh, that's kind of been going on with the governor's office, but. Uh, we have in our news today uh, a lawsuit filed on behalf of several states about the overtime law that uh, is is set to take effect. It's a kind of an edict down from the Obama administration to take effect in December, which basically aims to make more people eligible for overtime pay. Well, uh, Louisiana is one of, uh, like I said, several states involved in a lawsuit aiming to stop this. Uh, what's new with this? Do, is there any chance? Is there any precedent for this law even in the first place? Well, first of all, it, it, you know, myself and 23 other attorney generals and states joined in this suit. The suit was initiated out of Texas and Nevada. Uh, all of these states believe that this was a complete overreach by the executive. And, you know, the sad part about it is for seven years now, our economy nationwide has been growing at an anemic pace. Uh, we heard earlier today on, in, in your newscast of the, the grim uh jobs report, you know, and, and economic growth that, that Lafayette and the Homo Thibodeau uh, area ex- experienced. Louisiana as a whole mm-hmm. is still been experiencing anemic growth. And yet this is a regulation <clears throat> that, that, that purports to bypass Congress, which is going to further curtail job creation and slow job growth. And so I joined 23 other states. This is a suit that will cost our state zero dollars to get into. Okay, all we have to do is participate uh, in in some of the briefs, which we'll do with in-house counsel. And the, and the end result is that if we win, it's a huge win for job creators and the middle class here in Louisiana. You know, we are we're getting into the last quarter of the year. Let's see. Yeah, we're getting into it. October. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, a lot of businesses are making those plans, obviously, to start at the beginning. Um, does Litigation like this, and I don't even know if that's what you would call it. You're the, you're the attorney, Jeff. Uh, but <laughs> does this hold up that? I mean, should business owners still plan for it to take effect? Or would it, or would this kind of ongoing back and forth stall it at least for a little while in, in taking effect? Well, that's what we're hoping to do. We're hoping certainly to stall it and get the courts to rule in our favor, which is to rule that this was unconstitutional. You know, we took a chance, uh, I along with I think 17 other states, joined in opposing uh, the president's clean power plan uh, and, and ended up with a stay by the U.S. Supreme Court right prior to Scalia's death. Mm-hmm. That, was, that was a huge victory for us. It was a huge victory for consumers of electricity in Louisiana. All the consumers out there are slated to have a huge electrical increase if we have to implement this particular bogus plan. Mm-hmm. And so at that time, a lot of people said kind of the, said the same questions you had. Do we have a chance? Is this worth it? Absolutely it's worth it, because what we're seeing is the federal government continuing to pile regulation on top of regulation that stifles our economy. Every day we hear about poor economic growth. Every day people are losing their jobs, and people can't make it. And again, when you look at one of the key indicators as to why, you look at the federal regulatory scheme that's frustrating the business climate. You know, I just wonder, too, because it, it's, you know, all of these executive orders and this and, you know, something else coming from the executive branch. You know, that's why we have, you know, all of these these three different branches, because they are supposed to be uh, this checks and balances on each other. You're exactly correct. And what has happened over the last eight years under this president and what you're seeing, unfortunately, in, 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 in some governors is an abuse of their executive authority in that in that when. When the will of the legislature won't give in to their own personal agenda, they try to use their power to circumvent the will of the legislature. And again, the legislature is designed to be the will of the people. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you real quick, too. Do you feel that way the same way about the budget situation? You need the, the money that you've asked for, but yet you can't even get it to committee to be heard. Shouldn't it at least... Shouldn't they at least let the reins off enough so you can get your stuff to committee so then the legislators in that committee can decide whether or not it should go forward? Well, absolutely. You know, Bernie, it's a foreshadow of what I predicted would happen, you know, several months ago when I argued for control of my own budget. And it wasn't just for me. I was arguing for all statewide constitutional elected officials that they should have complete control of their budget. So that way the administration and the governor wouldn't have 
an additional pressure point uh, to pressure us into bending to their will. And, of course, when you see a disagreement arise, like the governor and I, I have had on a couple of different issues, again, what you see behind the scenes is him trying to use the power of the purse to bend my will. And so, this, but again, this is a, this is re, absolutely ridiculous that he would use that power to circumvent these two issues. One, everyone knows we have to do something about Medicaid fraud. We have an opportunity to continue to re, recover hundreds of millions of dollars back to the state at a time when the governor is expanding Medicaid. And the legislature wants us to do something about Medicaid fraud. And yet he's denying us those particular funds, funds that are actually there. And then again, the governor signs those seven laws that have been challenged. He purports to support the pro-life agenda, and yet he won't give us the money necessary to defend their, the legislature and his laws. As we're uh, kind of wrapping up here, I know we have limited time. I want to ask you uh, this coming up yesterday, late yesterday, um, a person arrested for um, vehicular homicide, driving left of center, not having a driver's license, um, and uh, DWI in an Evangeline Parish crash. Now, that driver that was arrested um, took the life of a 31-year-old man. So the driver, um, according to our, our KPL news sources, an illegal alien. So we have another case in Louisiana where we have someone killing someone in our state, and this, this person is an illegal alien, not a, no driver's license, you know, where, when does it happen that, that the laws that we have on the books are actually enforced? Well, well, first of all, Bernie, I want to applaud you and KPL for breaking that particular story because evidently the news media, the mainstream media, is not interested in when innocent American lives are lost in senseless tragedies. You know, just a couple of weeks ago, we had the fire chief over in St. John's, yeah. Mr. Chauvin, had lost his particular life yeah. to an illegal alien. And again, we have another case right here close to Acadiana, where a purported illegal alien has taken the life of another person. You know, that's something that's very near and dear to me, is that our immigration laws are important. And the problem is, is that when we allow illegal immigrants to continue to roam around our state unfettered and unchecked, then guess what? We, we have lost control of our legal system. Uh, and so it's something that we're going to be looking. So again, I applaud you and KPL for breaking that particular story. And after we it broke our investigators on that. We're, we're contacting the federal authorities, trying to decipher exactly what happened in that particular case and what exactly is the identity of the suspect who is in uh, basically in custody in that hospital. Our Attorney General Jeff Landry has joined us this morning. Sir, thank you very much uh, for commenting on all the issues this morning. Thank you, Bernie.